MuOS update time. This is an update to version 11, aka Beans, and this one is rightfully named Refried Beans. With this update, the RG28XX and the RG35XX SP get added to the list of supported handhelds that already include the H, Plus, and 2024 model. This adds support for the SP's lid sleep and resume functionality. And all supported devices benefit from an automatic shutdown after a set amount of time in sleep mode. This is a game changer for me, as you can set it to resume where you left off when you power it back on. This is the feature that I was really missing, and one of the reasons why I still would grab my Mio Mini with Onion OS on it. I'll go over this more in depth and how to set it up, but first, let me answer some common questions and run through the major changes before we do some walkthroughs. To install this update, you will have to reflash the SD card. I know this can be a pain, but the team is still making large changes to the foundation of the firmware, which makes this step necessary. However, if you're running the previous version of Beans, some tools built into the firmware will help make the backing up and transferring process easier. I will cover that in the backup and installation section. RetroArch has been updated to 1.19.1 with multiple core updates. The menus are more responsive and will remember your location when you back out of a menu. The menu or function button plus start is now what you use to quit out of a game instead of the select and start button as that was interfering with some games. The release notes state that the HDMI output video and audio has been fixed. However, I and VladNerd ran into a bug while using HDMI that completely shut off and disabled the audio and required a reflash of the firmware to fix it. So I would recommend staying away from that feature until a patch comes out and fixes this bug. There is a video player now, and I will show you how to get that up and running. Drastic Steward has been added, which to put it shortly, is a better optimized version of Drastic, and it brings a much welcomed performance improvement to DS games. The hotkeys will be different for Drastic Steward, and they should be added to the MuOS website at some point, but until then, here they are, I'll put them on the screen. You can pause and take a screenshot of this if you need to. This list comes from BGL Mini over on the MuOS Discord, so a shout out to him for providing this. There are some great new themes for MuOS. You can find them on Discord. The installation process is the same as I showed in my last MuOS Beans video, so check that out if you are unsure how to install them. Bluetooth is not supported yet and is still something that is probably far away, but still planned. And lastly, there is still not a box art scraper yet. This is something in the works, but no ETA as of yet. There are plenty of other smaller changes and fixes. If you want to go through everything, you can go check out the MuOS website or the GitHub and see the changes for yourself. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the backup and install process, and then I'll go through some of the features in more depth. Okay, so here I'm going to cover how to migrate data from the previous MuOS version beans to the new updated refried beans. If you are currently running version 11 beans, go ahead and power it up, go to applications, then backup manager. If you have set up artwork on this device, like box art, go ahead and select the backup artwork option. Once that's done, select the backup BIOS we are going to skip the backup config. Because of the RetroArch update, there have been issues reported about migrating the RetroArch config, so we're going to steer clear of that. Select Backup RetroArch Saves. And once this is all done, you can power off the device, connect the SD card to the computer. Then on the SD card, we will navigate to Backups and copy the three zip files to your computer. Grab the ROMs folder and the ports folder, if you have one, and copy those off. Navigate to MuOS and Emulators. If you have the standalone Pico 8 setup, copy the whole Pico 8 folder 
If you have any PSP game saves or cheats that you want to bring over, just go ahead and copy the whole PPSSPP folder. And lastly, if you have any DS save games you want to bring over, go into the drastic folder and grab the backup folder here. That's everything we need from the SD card. We can go ahead and start the installation process of refried beans. You have a couple of options for downloading the update. You can go to the muos.dev website, click on the RG35XX Plus and H on the left hand side, under releases, select download refried beans, click the download from our build page, then choose the version you need. For the RG28, that's at the top. Then the bottom is the Splash 24. This stands for SP plus H N24. So all of those devices use this same image. People have had issues with the download getting corrupted because the site has been getting hammered since the update. So if you do run into errors like this or this, your download is probably corrupted and you'll want to download it again. To avoid this happening, it's recommended that you either use a free download manager like Motrix or JDownloader so that your download won't fail if it gets interrupted. Or you can try one of the other download locations the community has created. I'll have links in the description for all the download options. After you download the file, you can check that it's been unaltered and not corrupted by verifying the checksum with SHA-256. There's an easy way to do this with the Rufus program, which we will also be using to flash the image. So if you don't have Rufus, go ahead and download it and then launch it. Extract the image file from the zip file that we downloaded. And then in Rufus, click the select button, select the image file, which it should end in a .img. Then click the little check mark next to browse. This will then give us a checksum, which we can compare with what I have on the screen, or you can go to the muos.dev website to make sure that it matches. If it does, you're good to go. And if your SD card is already connected, go ahead and start the flash. If it does not match, make sure you're checking the image file and not the zip file. And if it still does not match, you may need to re-download it again. Once the flash is done, eject your SD card, place it back in the device, power it on, and let it walk you through the installation. It will ask you what model you're using, and then it will have you set up your time zone, date, and time. Then the install can take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. And once it finishes, it has a little first time boot up intro, and then it will take you to the main menu. Once here, go ahead and power it down. Connect your SD card back to your computer as we're going to need to add content to it. Now, if you can't see your card here in the file explorer, you will need to right click on the Windows Start button, select Disk Management. When that window loads up, find your SD card in the bottom list. It will be the one with the box called ROMs. Right click on that ROMs box, select Change Drive Letter and Paths. Click the Add button on the window that pops up. Make sure Assign the following drive letter is selected and that you have a letter in the drop down box over to the right. And then click OK. You should now be able to see the SD card in your file explorer. Now for previous bean users, now that we have refried beans installed, let's get our backup data back on it. First, drag the three zipped files that we made into the backups folder. Next, drag the ports and ROMs folder just onto the SD card. And this is the one that may take a while. When that is done, navigate to MuOS, then Emulator, and drag the PPSSPP and Pico8 folder here. Now, when it asks you to overwrite the files, make sure to choose Skip these files, as we're just wanting to add the things that are missing and not overwrite anything. Then, back out to the MuOS folder again, select Save, then Drastic. And here, we will drop in the backup folder for the DS save files. Okay, so that's it for moving the files. You may still want to hang on to these in case you run into any problems and you need to reflash. 
you can go ahead and put your card back into your device, power it up, and we'll go to the applications and then archive manager. Here, go ahead and run the three files that we added. So artwork, BIOS, and RetroArc save. They may take a moment to run, but when they're done, your data should all be migrated now. All you will need to do is reset up your RetroArch config file. But I'm going to go over some of that in the next section with the sleep mode and shutdown setup. So let's go over the SP lid closing, how it works, how to change it, and what else you can do with it. By default, when you close the lid, it goes into sleep mode. Now this is a true sleep mode. It pauses everything that's running, it shuts the screen off, and the battery drain is anywhere between 3 and 5% per hour. Once you open it back up, it will resume. Now, when you leave it closed for a set amount of time, it will shut down. It is set to 5 minutes by default, but you can change this. From the main menu, go to Configuration, General Settings, then go to Sleep Shutdown. Set this to whatever you would like. You could disable it completely, or set it to shut down instantly. 10 minutes seems like a good option to me, but I'm going to set it to 10 seconds just for demonstration purposes. So now when you close the lid, it will go into sleep mode, and then it will shut down the system when it hits that shutdown time. Now, by default, it will not save your game or load your game when you reopen it. So be careful here. This is something that can be set up, but it's not there right away. Now, sleep mode may not work for all ports, so you will need to test these out. As you can see here with Stardew Valley, I close the lid at 8.40 in-game time. I'll leave it here for about 30 seconds. And when I open it up, you can see the screen was off. However, the game was still running. So just be aware of this. Now, to set it up to auto-save and auto-load your games after the sleep shutdown, first note that this only works for games running through RetroArch. So if you have set a short shutdown time, save your port or your standalone emulator games before you close the lid or you may lose some playtime. From the main menu, go to Application, RetroArch, then Settings, and Saving. You will want to enable both Auto Save State and Auto Load State. Then back out two times, go to Configuration File, and select Save Current Configuration. Then you can back out and select Quit. Now we need to go to the Configuration page from the main menu, then General Settings, where it says Device Startup. Change it to be Last Game. Now, if you use Retro Achievements, you will want to go to Advanced Settings and enable the RetroArch Network Wait. This will make sure that your network has connected before starting the game to make sure that Retro Achievements will not fail its connection. If you don't use Retro Achievements, you can ignore this. Okay, so that's it. So now, when you're playing a game through RetroArch and you close the lid, it will do its normal standby mode, and then when left alone long enough and it hits the shutdown time, it will save your state and then shut down. When you open it back up, you do still have to hold down the power button to turn it on. If you have the network wait setting enabled, you will see this screen where you can just wait for it to connect or hit start to skip it and go right to the game. I will let it fully load so you can see how it works with Retro Achievements and connects properly. Alright, and there we go. Game loaded, state loaded, Retro Achievements connected. Here is what it would look like without the network weight enabled. It will load faster, but as you can see, the Retro Achievements will fail. Another thing to note is that this setup will work for other systems like the H Plus or 28XX, but instead of closing the lid, 
you would just hold the power button for two seconds to start sleep mode. I often get asked about a video player, so here it is, and this is how to get it working now that it's here. While accessing your SD card or new computer, create a folder in ROMs called whatever you want, but I'll just name mine videos. Then drag your videos in here. It's best if you use something like Handbrake to make the videos like 480p resolution and make sure that they're in the MP4 format. Once you have your videos added, put the card back in the device, navigate to that video folder and explore, hit select on any of the videos and choose video player, then FF play. Then you should be able to launch your videos here. You can use the L1 and R1 or D-pad to skip forward and back the start button, pauses and unpauses, and the select button or function and select will close you out. Closing the lid with the SP or sleep mode with the other devices works fine, but heads up, when it hits the shutdown timer, your playback time will be lost. But I'm happy to say that it works pretty well. All right, let's go over some common issues and how to fix them. If you get a black screen on the H model after booting, or the SP is not sleeping with the lid closed, these issues are caused by having the wrong device type selected in the MuOS configuration menu. If you're someone who swaps SD cards between devices, watch out for this one. For the H's black screen issue, you will need to put the SD card back into the SP and change it to the H before swapping it. For the SP sleep issue, just go to the configuration menu and change the device type to SP. If you moved over your Stardew Valley port and are having issues launching the game like this, you will first need to download the zip file I have linked in the description, connect your SD card to your computer, and go to Ports, Stardew Valley, open the GL4ES folder, unzip the file you downloaded, and drag the two files here. When asked, select Replace the Files. After this, boot back into MuOS on your device, go to Apps and launch Portmaster, find Stardew Valley on the list, and select Reinstall. After doing these two steps, you should be able to now launch the game. If you want to learn how to use Portmaster or set up Stardew Valley for the first time, Go ahead and check out my other video I have for Portmaster and I show a couple other games and how to set them up. A big thanks to Adazul for putting in the work and making MuOS the best custom firmware for these devices, hands down. I encourage you to join the Discord. If you want to support the project, I'll drop a link for the Kofi donation page. And by doing so, you can also get access to the early test builds. That's about everything I wanted to go over. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.